All right, so this is weird. How did I appear on your guys' channel? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Day one, 2022 SEMA. Found this clown, P92 Drew. We're gonna take you through kind of the best cars in the show. It starts here, the Toyota Tires Tread Pass. They always have all the secret stuff that goes on before the show. They unveil it here. So we're gonna go one by one. What I think is cool, what this guy thinks is cool. Which is usually not very cool. No, it's but, not. But anyway, I mean, we're gonna throw you some cars. We're gonna show you the stuff, yeah. what we think is awesome. And we'll take you around SEMA. Okay, so first car we found, wide body E30. It's got some Japanese motor, it's special. What was that? What was I think that it's a 2JZ. Okay. Maybe? Yeah, it also yeah. has AST 5300s. Scotty built this, good friend of mine from Juggles Garage. He builds super clean cars. This is an Aston Martin brown paint color, which I love. Let's talk about this. Well, it says 2JZ, no shit on it. Yeah, well, duh. Yeah, I told you. I don't you. know how you missed it. I told you. I what told it was. him it was a 2JZ, and he said he, he couldn't yeah. figure it out. He wanted validation. It's got status seats with the throwback to the E30 plaid. Is it short tooth? I don't, I don't know. Super sick. Really nice. Did you guys see this? RWB? Yep. Yoshi Wara, I believe. Looks like it's got all Lexan roof, which is wild. Oh, yeah. oh. okay. We get, a, we get uh -oh. a sneak peek. So what's special about this? Uh, actually, not too much other than the induction system and the standalone is now all from Rasan. So it's running a MoTeC M800 ECU. Awesome. With their harness from Rasan mm -hmm. and the Rasan induction with ITV system. It gets a lot better response. Yeah. It has the Lighten RSR flywheel and a super light harmonic damper. After this, we'll get a diner tune and see how much power it'll actually make. The bottom end is still a stock 3.6. Yeah, we got the inside scoop, so car was flown in from Japan. It has, I think, uh, one of the only built HKS motors in that size. There's more info right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a 3.0, so it's the world premiere of the 3.0 Grady motor, the 3.0 RB from them. Guy built in Japan, flew the car over to SEMA. It's amazing because it's purple painted carbon fiber. It has the Recaro seats that I love that I want to put in a G80 one day. Those are for, perfect for the M4 CSL, those seats. Now you said last year, this car was just raw carbon. It was. It was here. Yeah, it did not have that motor. Um, this is one of Larry's yeah. favorite cars. We were walking around with him. He mentioned the car to us. I don't know if you can catch this on camera, but like yeah, it's built into the clear. It's so difficult to get the raw carbon, but also have, you know, the, the, the color, right? The purple. Yeah. yeah, it was really well done. And the cage matches which is amazing. Yeah, and the engine bay is also painted that same purple. It really matches the carbon, but it doesn't take away from it. Normally, <laughs> you see a lot of wide bodies out there nowadays, and you know, the, the fitment and the fit and finish of the jobs, they're not that great. This thing is just, it's got zero imperfections on it. All right, guys, I want to highlight the E36 kit, the Kaiza built. This is the LTO car, S52 turbo. I mean, this is everything that I love, the motor, the body. And this is actually a rendering from the Kaiza that they turned into real life. So it's a really neat insight into a custom body kit design and how it's made for the street. What do you think, Drew? Looks sweet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about this car, man. Love the design, though. I mean, I love the whole layout of it, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's got the it's, M rain interior with the Recaro pole positions, front and rear interior, sick roll bar. It's just so extreme. Big fat yeah. butt. It's perfect. It's a reflection yeah. of the design. Yeah. Rubies. It's on airbags. Yep. I mean, everything about it just. Day two, SEMA show. 
We're at the Motown AST booth where we've been all day. Wanted to walk you through our special R32. It actually is top 12 Battle of the Builders. It's about to leave the booth, so we wanted to get this in on the video. Sean at Attacking the Clock developed all the carbon on the car, the doors, the fenders. He did all the aero on the car, the wing, all of that, installed all the dampers. We actually built the DCT transmission that this has. We did the clutches and everything. It's a BMW DCT that's mated to this crazy motor. It makes like 1,200 horsepower. This is built by Attacking the Clock Racing. They're kind of a partner of ours through a lot of different things. It's up on the air jacks right now. So these are the AST air jacks that Sean installed on the car. This has the Moton Motorsport three-way system on it for the R32. It's really gonna be a competitive car. This is a car that's set up to do a hill climb. It's set up for Pikes Peak. It's just a super neat car, really well done. And it really highlights the Moton part of what we do in the racing part. This has been our camp for the whole week. So let me show you some of the new products. We can start with the lowering springs. We have lowering springs over here. Everybody knows we came out with the G8X stuff. It's a huge seller for us. Uh, we're also gonna be releasing soon the ALS series, similar to a height adjustable spring kit. It's adjustable. It goes a lot lower than most of the other competitors. So that was something people were asking for. We also have on display 5100 series here, and that's the kits without the top mounts. It's actually for the factory. So this is the F series rear OEM platform, and this is the front platform for F series. So this is for the street guys that just want to run a nice coilover setup, have a soft ride, better performance. We have the 5100 competition, which is the front top mount and rear. So this is the same kit, just competition series and non-competition series. We sell a lot of these at the shop and when people come in, they wanna say, yeah, I want a coilover kit, but I don't want it to be noisy. I'm not going to the track. It's a street car. I just wanna make it lower, pure aesthetic. It's gonna be this kit. We wanna do performance track setups and everything where we're gonna change their front camber or any of the alignment settings. We go with the 5100 series. We have some other crazier systems here, like the 5200 and 5300, which is a two and three way damper. It has different compression settings, different rebound settings. The AST line is really a crazy line. We have a lot of stuff available for a lot of different stuff. This is actually a roller coaster shock that we make. It's actually made as a private label. So Disney, Busch Garden, SeaWorld, they all have roller coasters that have these dampers on them. So if you've ever been on those rides, these are what you're riding on. This is the Safari kit. Tomorrow. It's a motorsport three-way kit, but it's for a Safari Porsche, classic Porsche. Over here, we have a two-way kit for the Tesla Model 3. This is a new product we're releasing soon. A lot of the guys are starting to race the Model 3s and the Model Ys, so they asked for this product. It's a really high-performance product for, for electric, which is unfortunately our future. We have the G80 one-way. You guys are really familiar with this. This is about to launch here. This is on our G80 project. It's done. It's got a really cool rear setup. It's a 51-millimeter ID canister with the true coilover setup in the rear. Really unique for the G80. There's really no one else on the market that offers this. This offers a lot of availability for springs and keeps the best motion ratio for the car. And we have a motorcycle damper. So on a motorcycle, you know, the ride height is determined by the rider. This actually has a really cool feature on it. You can actually adjust the spring preload on the fly with the hydraulic turn of this. And then if you swing around,
All right, we're live from the Sumo Show. Not really. Yeah, no. <laughs> What's well, that? Ew. This is, uh, it's windy out, man. Yeah. This is the only time I've been in Vegas where I'm actually shivering. Yeah. Uh, it's super windy and there's no sun. Yeah, well, I live so, in Florida, so I didn't bring a jacket. Yeah. Well, I brought six and I didn't give you any of them because I don't like them. All right, so this is weird. How did I appear on your guys' channel? I don't know what's going on here, man. I don't know. So we are at the Pit Paddock booth, SEMA 2022. This booth is awesome. They have free coffee. They're out. They're out. I'm patiently waiting. For okay, them. we're gonna leave the booth and we're not coming back <laughs> right. ever again. Just kidding. I have a signing here at 11. Uh, what do you want to do? I want to walk around and talk shit, man. Okay. I want to well, like. It's kind of hard to talk shit about the cars that are in this booth. Not these. These are all great. Uh -huh. These are all tens. But you know, when you come to SEMA, you could go that direction, and there's about 300 vehicles. We won't say what they are. Where the bottom of the vehicle is about this tall. We could talk shit about those. Hey, 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 man. Hey. Hey. Are you making yeah. fun of your own people, dude? No, they're not. They came people. all the way those from are, Florida, dude. Those, those are not. Those are, they came are. all the way yeah. from Florida. I bet you. I bet you. Fifty percent have Florida license plates. Yes, Florida license plates. Yeah. I bet you a bunch of them are from Orlando. Dude. And they, they probably say flow grown, salt light. There's one of an AR-15 in the state of Florida shape. Okay, so I I don't want to make fun of any car culture. I love all no. car culture, right. but I get that it's by necessity, right? So. In Florida, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but the tallest hill is 300 feet, right? Yeah. So then they don't actually need, like, that's what they need to get over the hill, over the humps that are 300 feet. Right. Yeah. Two-wheel drive is totally fine in Florida. One-wheel drive. What you could, yes, one actual one-wheel drive will suffice in the state of Florida, unless you go on the beach. Well, let's talk about, how about the two V1? Yeah, okay, let's, let's talk about the V1. Okay. On paper. When I was told about the wheels, I was like, nah, I don't know. But in person, they're pretty bad at everything. So this is a very good example of something that I couldn't imagine how much the stock P1 wheel costs. For, <laughs> right. For, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's easy, I think. I believe it is. Something like that. And to improve on that, it's something else. Well, aesthetically, right. This is what I would do with my P1. And knowing Greg, this is Greg wheels. I love the color and everything. And this is the same kind of wrap that I have on the on the pink car. Yeah, no, tech. So super nice, looks painted. It's pretty cool that you can park it in race mode because like the Ford GT, when you put it in race mode, if you turn it off, it raises up again. It's really beautiful. You know, the P1, when it first came out, I had a chance to photograph it parked next to a 12C and it made the 12C look like a Toyota Camry. Yeah, my favorite part is the back, like the way it's open in the back with the wing. It's like, it's amazing. And it's actually bringing me back to the flashbacks from the hurricane when the yellow home was floating down in the ocean. Oh, hey, whatever happened to that? Uh, I'm sure it's being sold somewhere by some less than credible dealer. But the whole world knows about that car. So. Or maybe someone's going to buy it and take the motor out and put it in an RX-7, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like the theme, right? I mean, you it guys... Is. I don't know if you had a chance to see my friend Kaiza's Zonda yeah. V12, which I know you guys are gonna call me out and I've been getting called out nonstop. It's not a Zonda, it's an AMG V12. It's the I understand that. It's, a, it's the M1, I forget what the name of the motor I, is. I, I, I understand that, but what? that's the car that we know that has had that motor. But that's what makes the motor even cooler, because it's in that. I talked to Kaiza yesterday for a while. What a cool guy, and it's so awesome to see something on paper become real, so to speak, with his body kits. Wait, you're a Honda guy, dude. You love oh, Hondas. Well, every car you drive is a Honda. Every car has the, every car I drive has the hand of God from Honda on the one back. Is my Fluffy on? Judas Fluffy. Did you, you call me Fluffy? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are inside the show now. Am, am I the host of this segment you of your vlog you now? Yeah, you okay, I'm the host. The guest host. Yeah, I'm so guest host. host right? We actually tricked you. <laughs> so welcome to your new permanent job, Larry. Yeah. Dang it. I mean, actually, I'm, I'm kind of excited. Yeah. This is going to be fun. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to become a Florida man. Okay. So much to learn. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're at the Valvoline booth, and of course, Rob Dom's amazing four-rotor all-wheel drive, wide body, extra, extra wide yeah. body. Oh, RX-7 yeah, is right. here. Yeah. In terms of uh, cars of the show, for me, this is one of them. This is six years in the making, 
you, this is what I love about the CMS show. You know, this is why I come here. I don't come for the Bluetooth drive shafts. I come for these type of builds that inspire me. And the origin of this story, the thing, the reason why I like it is because Rob was inspired by Ken's unicorn. He wanted to build like a unicorn competitor. And now it's sitting in the booth. Rob's here talking to fans, showing what this is about and just spreading car culture, spreading do it yourself, you know, dream big, all of that. Drew uh, let me borrow his Valencia Orange 1M. And then I happened to park it next to Ken's $12 million Audi e-tron uh, electronic car. And then I think you put up a poll, which one would you rather have? Insane, 71% of the people would prefer the 1M over the, the, what was it, the Huna? Uh, uh, no, the Hunatron. Hunatron, that's right. Yes. So here's what's cool about the 1M that I don't even think you know, or maybe, maybe you do know. The 1M is gonna be a SEMA build for 2023. So it will be here next year. Right. I'm not gonna tell you what we're doing with it. It is a little bit of a secret, but it's gonna be very extreme. Uh, we specifically wanted a Valencia orange, because the, you know, the, the color everybody wants on the 1M. We wanted a 1M, not a one series. And we want to take it 12 notches higher. We want to go to volume 11, just turn it all the way up. I don't think you need to. Uh, from the poll, it seems like it's already a hit. I know. And you can just put it yeah. in the booth as Bone is. Stock, right. Bone stock, also right. still dirty from shooting Electricana right. all week here in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, I think 71% of the audience yes. would much rather see that than the Hunachan. That means there's still 21% of the audience that didn't like it. That's why we got to turn it up to level 11. So if you were planning on doing a electric swap, no. maybe, maybe don't. No, no. Yeah. we are not. No, we are yeah. not. We are we're not. not. Yeah. But That's a big no-no. But I think there's car. still some ways to go with the culture accepting electric cars more so, and we're going to have to. We see it more every SEMA. I've been coming for 10 years. Just more and more start to creep in, more and more start to be cool. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to check out my friends at Renner. They're also Florida men. Uh, and BMW. And, and BMW nerds, like the biggest. So we'll check out their booth right now. So Renner, they get older BMWs and then they put new running gear yeah, in so them. Updated. Yeah, so updated. Yeah, they in update the spirit, them. It's in the spirit of Harga and Alpina. And there's like E30 here, there's an E31 there, and there's an E28 there. And they all have like S85, S62, S85. Like, Super cool. Yeah. I love this stuff. And they're building everything. They're doing the interior, the stripes, like old Alpina used to do at Hardga. Like this is like 80s tuner, nerd stuff, BMW nerd stuff. And they're kind of recreating that, which is awesome. It's like a really neat thing that they're doing. And you, you actually got to see the cars run. Yeah, so I had a chance to see this run. It sounds crazy. Uncorked V10 is just yeah, insane. Cool. Um, they had the intake manifold off on the 5 Series and it looked so crazy, you know? I mean, the individual throttle bodies, just insane. So I've actually had a chance to drive that 8 Series in Miami. I shot it a couple of years ago, and it being a V8 that has more power than the V12 that came with it, oh my God, it's just so much better in terms of a car, even though it lost four cylinders, you know? For sure, and that, that motor was so heavy at the time too, that I like the performance. When you drive an 850 stock, it feels slow. Even though it's a V12, you have all this, you're so excited, okay, V12, and you're always disappointed. So I know that motor with that torque, like it has to be perfect for the car. Yeah, so much yeah. better. It's kind of interesting because I feel like there's not enough of this in the BMW market. We've seen it time and time again in Porsches, right? Sure. And then now you see all these other manufacturers starting to kind of do something similar, right? Now you can get a restored, completely redone Lancia, uh, Volvos now, old Volvos. The right? son's doing the R32s, right? Yeah. Yeah, like it's something that the BMW market's 100% missing. That's why I'm excited to see it here because it's exactly what should be going on because the price point is lower from Porsche. It's more accessible for people to do. And I think it's more fun because there's more motors you can do. There's V8, V10, straight sixes, there's everything. So it's, it's awesome. Yeah, so this car, the E30 M3, of course, prices are crazy, right? Yeah. Especially like a Evo, who, who knows? I mean, 150 plus, right? For sure. I mean, and they weren't even made here. So like those are really rare. But I mean, an accessible car is an E28, which is the green one, the far car. I mean, you can pick those up for 10 to 20,000. And those were made by hand by BMW 
they last. Like, they're cool cars. And those are accessible. And really, so are the 8 Series. 8 Series are, are, are really, you know, people are excited about those now, but the prices are still low and prices are still attainable for most people. And the thing is, let's be honest, while the E30 M3, such a cool car, so fun to drive in stock form, the power is kind of lacking it, as a stock. It is, and the S14 has a really expensive yeah. motor to service. It's really finicky. Like, you literally pull it out of this booth, pull it in the booth, pull it back, plugs are fouled, they got to be pulled. Back in 01, when I swapped my S52, I put S52 in it, got rid of the S14, it made the car, and I think it still makes the car. A lot of people with S14s yell at me, but if you give anybody a key to that car that doesn't know what motor's in it, and they go and drive it with the S52, they think it's a bone stock BMW and they want to know what's in it. And then I open the hood and they're like, can't believe it. Yeah, so a couple of things on this, like, I, I think they tried, honestly, their best to kind of make it OEM Plus and potentially make it what BMW would have done. And that's kind of what I like, is the fact that they didn't make like huge cone air filters or anything like that. They recreated air boxes and... They did, and they kept like the iconic like pop-up lights that the 8 Series has. Like it's cool, it really works. This engine bay has a ton of room in it to be able to do this, and it looks like they took the time and did it OEM. And BMWs are interesting in that they, they never really made a supercar themselves, right? So this is kind of the essence of that, right? Like in my perfect world, you know what would have been the perfect BMW supercar? Is the Z4, like the GT3, yeah. but like a street version of it? For sure. That would have been, honestly, I... Yeah, that's one of the top 10 most iconic BMWs. So cool, yeah. so good looking. Loved watching it race all over the world. Yeah, me too. Definitely. In Japan. Yeah, definitely, in definitely enjoyed uh, uh, just seeing the liveries, seeing the, the way it looked. It was just so far from the street vehicle, it wasn't even the same thing. Um, this is the line in the sand for BMW. I mean, the V10 and the V8, the S S65 and S85 were the NA line in the sand for the M3 and the M5. So like to see it here in these body styles is, 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 is amazing. Yeah, this one is super cool. I can't wait to drive this one. We got a dry sump system yeah. here. That's probably how the motor sitting so low because yeah. they were able to do that. So that's really hard on these because there's not the height on the E28. It has a really flat, super flat hood. Love the green on green also. Yeah, yeah. Looks green great. interior looks great. Really reminds me of Alpina. Like, this is exactly what like Alpina would do. So for uh, such a big BMW slash Honda guy, you're not saying much. No, I'm just taking it all in. This, I mean, th this generation is not necessarily my, my era, my education, it's his. So when he talks, I just listen. I'm just enjoying it. But they, the quality is great. Interior, exterior, drivetrains, I mean, they, they really took it to another level. Yeah. And I think BMW does need it, to your point, right? Like, every other manufacturer out there right now is doing something like this, and they're private builders doing it, and it's good to see that BMW culture is bringing not quite the classic stuff, but um, modern classics, right? Yeah, so, that's a good way to put it. And I also like the fact that this, in terms of like price point, this is becoming a thing in the BMW market, right? So I talked to Ronald, who is the head of Renner, basically just kind of gave me the lowdown of the prices. We have 350, 275, and 350 once this one's completed. I think that really kind of puts them up the same level as a lot of high-end cars. Also, another thing is it makes me happy that there's a market for them. Me too. You know, because me too. Because it makes it makes BMW make the parts that we need to be able to keep these cars running. Right. It puts people's interests in the right place from a classic perspective. And it's exactly what the market needs. One of the things that Ronald was telling me is that he bought the four last windshields for the E30 and he has four new ones at his shop. That's that's what I fight. I mean my sixties BMWs, like glass is like really tough. I have to bring it from Germany on like a pallet. They get broken, like it's just a battle to find those parts to complete cars. Even like window, the window molding and all of that stuff is not made. Let me just break this down for you guys, okay? I put out a video three days ago saying $80,000 GR86 build, okay? People are like, oh my God, so unrelatable. There's no way normal people can afford that. $80,000 is just how much the parts cost in the car. I'm not even factoring labor right. or tax. Once that car, my simple, the simplest bolt-on car at SEMA, once that made it to the booth, who knows, after all said and done, it could have got up to 120, 125 for a bolt-on car, you know? Right. 
So, and then a, a good example is your G80. How much do you think it would cost to build it, including tax, including labor, all parts? Including the car? Including the car. Yeah, 150, oh. 160. Yeah. I would, and we're talking I about, would argue more. I would, maybe I'd, more. I'd, yeah, I'd say labor. 175 with labor. When you're talking about customization, you know, yeah. it's not even the same thing. We're talking about a car that has basically just bolt-ons right. and a couple things massaged. These yeah. go down to the frame. Yeah. yeah. They literally They're go down to the frame, down raw down. metal. There's no, yeah. I mean, to put it into yeah. perspective, I mean, my G80 has no paint, no interior. Same with yours, no, no yeah. paint. It has some, I think it has seats uh, you know, or whatever, but this is custom interior, custom paint. People don't realize the workmanship and the people it takes to be able to do something like this, to find technicians that can do this work, that know what it needs, and know these cars and know those motors, I would say it's impossible to find. It's still, it's still your Are you guys arguing already again? Yeah. What's that? Are you guys arguing already? Um, not yet. We never argue. <laughs> I love my older brother. How was the show for you, Larry? Show How was, was the show for you? Wait, what show is was it? kind what of incredible. Oh, oh my God, it was a, oh, a thousand pounds. Influencer of the year, 2022. So oh, I, I totally 100% did not expect that at all. You know, it's crazy. I was in really good company. Of course, Adam LZ, you know, they're, they're good friends yeah. with us. Uh, TJ Hunt, another amazing friend. And Alex Taylor, what she didn't realize is I have so many photos of her when she first started competing in Hot Rod Drag Week with her dad in her 68 Camaro. And of course, Chris fix it. Nobody knows what he looks like. He wears a helmet. He's the Stig of the <laughs> YouTube world. So those guys and uh, Alex also, I've been so lucky to be able to photograph them. And then they kind of let me do my work. You know, they, they allow me to practice my craft. And it's such an honor to even just be in the same category as them. I, I said this in, in my speech, you know, this is my 16th year shooting the SEMA show, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. It's my favorite show to go to. I mean, it is the grandest show, as you guys have seen. As I just you know, experienced. This was your first show. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've lived in, you know, digitally through everybody else's footage, yours and a lot of other influencers out there. So I feel like I've been here before, but now to be able to walk the halls, get an education on what I don't know, which is basically everything, because I'm a donkey. Uh, it's been pretty awesome. Yeah, but you actually have some other news on the car. Yeah, so, you know, all great things come to an end, as Mr. What, what, what hey, I was wait, calling wait. you, uh, one-line Larry. One-line Larry over yeah. here, yeah. So, uh, all yeah. good things must come to an end. Right. I'm gonna sell the G80 with all the mods. And it's got even Cherry, Akrampovich, Moton. It has future classic stuff, big partners on this, on this car, a lot of special parts. Larry has his part in it. I mean, he's had the car three months now? Yeah, we've taken it all over the US. We've parked it literally in the weirdest places in that it's like the center center of the Formula Drift paddock, you know? Yeah. Kind of showing it off. Um, I, I love what you've done with this vehicle because you've fixed the worst part of this thing, which was the look, you know? The look was a little rough, a tough pill to swallow for a lot of people but you guys fixed that, and I think it looks incredible. Yeah, and it's an amazing car. It's one of BMW's best in threes, mm -hmm. and you know the mods make the car special, and they make it neat. People follow me and see me and text me when you're driving it. Oh, you're in Nevada. Oh, you're in Northern California. No, I'm not. Hilarious. <laughs> he's got the car. <laughs> right. So it's been awesome. You know, a lot of really cool partners, Titan 7, mm -hmm. even Churi, Warsteiner, Akrapovich, all the guys at Turn 14. Of course, our Moton suspension is on it, so it's going for sale. You can message Drew at add Drew Leslie. You can also message me at Precision Sport. You can also message Larry. Yeah, message me. I'll tell you all about the good things about it because, man, the she. There's a lot. She's uh. She's been on that extended test drive. She's yeah. she's very very powerful. She she drives good. Yeah, and also the funk the the uh, the turtle shell. Turtle shell. Right. It's functional. It is. Not just for looks. It is. You've no, slept in it twice. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. In Utah. We have slept yeah. in it. Uh, yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. That's our secret. Yeah. And what I'm really excited about, I'm really excited to drive more. Yeah. I mean, that's what we all got this, got into this for. And I mean, I've been bugging Drew for so long to at least build a drift car and come drifting with us or do some track stuff. And yeah. I know he was a motorcycle nerd before, what do they call them? 
They call me? What, what do they call the motorcycle uh, guys? Uh, he calls Bobo me Bobo Brain. Brain. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I've hit my head a few times. Right. Yeah, Bobo. Wait. So I got a Bobo Brain. I have no memory. Yeah. No, I don't go. remember not having a memory. So. Yeah. It's yeah. Like a goldfish. Yeah, that's right. Nice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Awesome. SEMA 2022. Yeah. There okay. you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Until next year. Love you, man. Thank you. Love you guys.